Hey guys, it's me again. I thought that I would just come over here and shoot uh, a fast one. A fast one. Let's see how fast this goes. Um, about food. Just because I, I had it on my mind and I want to let my shake settle a few more minutes before I start my workout. So, anyway, a lot of you guys have been asking about um, the changes that I've made in my diet so far and in the, the cut types of foods that I've been eating. Um, and I will tell you this, the changes I've made even in just the past week um, have made such a notable difference on how I feel and also, let's be honest, on, I say let's be honest, this is a big part of what is important to me, is fat loss. Um, so like, you know, how I look, that's also a big part of what I'm doing. I'd be lying if I said, it's always just about how I feel. I just wanna feel good. It's also, I want to look good again. I want to lose the weight that I am, am aiming for. So um, the first changes that I made when I came home from Phoenix, as you guys know, I cut out um, Splenda and Diet Soda um, and then started cutting out the, um, things like the, um, well, yeah, I think most of it was, was really based on cutting out Splenda and artificial sweeteners, which of course you guys that have been watching me for a while, you know that my attitude was like, because I, it's just, it's always been, whether it's my coffee made creamer or my diet soda or whatever, it's just, I kind of joked about it all this time. But the thing is, is I realized I'm spending this much money on this much treatment to fix my hormones and a big part, the more that I'm doing all this research and reading, a, a big part of what contributes to hormonal imbalance and adrenal fatigue and cortisol and blah, blah, blah. It's all of the, the totality of the chemicals and the toxic stuff um, that gets into our bodies. Um, the birth control pill is huge, antibiotics are huge, but so is everything else, so you guys know you know, that was step one for me. It was, it was cutting out and that was not what I wanted to do, but I did it. I made the decision that I was cutting out diet soda. I made the decision I was cutting out the, the Splenda and you know, several weeks into it, I was like, no big deal. And it hasn't been a big deal. I'd be lying to you guys. I've said this before. If I told you that I don't, you know, at any given time go really like a diet Mountain Dew. I'd really like a diet Pepsi. Um, so, do I still want it? Yes. Do I still love the taste? Yes. Um, but you know, it's just what's more important to me. And it's very, very stupid for me to be spending, you know, several hundreds, uh, several hundreds, several hundred dollars a month for this treatment and to ignore that, you know, to be treating yourself and then almost like refeeding the sickness back into you, right? Um, so that was part one. Um, and then I noticed myself without really making an announcement or a plan about this, I just noticed that as I started making my meals each week, I was getting more into, you know, real food. Um, I was having eggs and Ezekiel toast for breakfast um, with my, um, I almost said my paleo coffee, but my version of Bulletproof coffee, which is I put in four grams of coconut oil. I measure this with my food scale. Um, I put in almond extract. I put in the uh, <coughs> now brand, now foods brand stevia, which is the only stevia on the planet that has made me a true believer. Um, I had tried probably seven different versions, Trader Joe's versions. Um, I don't know. I think I've tried. I mean, I tried to like stevia so many different <coughs> times. I've had several brands send me their products, and every time I was like, Oh, it's that stevia taste. And then we went to this, um, Fitfluential had an event with Now Foods, and I, I think I've talked about this to you guys before, but several of my Fitfluential ambassadors were like, oh yeah, their stevia is the best. And ever since that event, I've been using their stevia with pleasure. Um, so really, really like it. So I put the coconut oil in, I put um, stevia, two of those, and then I put in almond extract, and I mix it up with best thing I ever bought, this immersion blender. Um, this one I got from KitchenAid. Um, it's just awesome. In fact, I packed it on my last trip to um, Denver. So that's what I've been having for breakfast. Um, I do have a, a protein shake. Um, I have read that whey protein is also very good for insulin resistance slash metabolic syndrome, whatever you want to call it. Um, and guys, that's a big part of um, my issues are... <laughs> You guys are like, I can tell you what your issues are. Um, metabolic syndrome 
slash insulin resistance and I'm also hypothyroid. So I have the best of both worlds when it comes to um, what causes you to not be able to have fat loss like you want to, um, especially around your core. That's what I'm dealing with. Um, so, and, and then I was finding myself liking to make, um, I, this kind of got started with me when I was out in uh, Phoenix with Whitney. She had this great meal prep company and they would just have, you know, stacks of salmon and um, uh, grilled chicken and, and uh, different proteins, you know, divided out, portioned separately. And then she'd have her vegetables and I would just take, you know, a protein and a vegetable, throw it in a pan, saute it, add my spices. And it was just yummy. It was, it was, it was yummy. I liked having the real food. And it, it takes a lot of the, the thinking out of, um, out of it. Sorry, dry skin. I didn't put my moisturizer on this morning. <sighs> and um, so I just found myself again moving in more of a direction of like throwing something in a pan on the stove, making a bunch of vegetables, um, maybe sometimes adding some uh, organic tomato sauce on it, but paying more attention to fruits, vegetables, real food, um, real protein, buying my protein and making sure that it's um, organic because again, the more that I'm reading all of the stuff that I used to ignore for several years about, you know, why you need to have organic, why you need to have, you know, why do I buy Eglin's Best Eggs? Because the chickens aren't, you know, they're fed a vegetarian diet. They're um, they're treated well. Um, they're not stuffed with hormones to make them bigger. And the eggs, you know, and, and you, when you open those up, you see that the eggs they look better. They look like Nigella Lawson eggs. Um, so I definitely been moving quite naturally into more of a natural food thing. Um, I found myself, even though I'm always tempted, I go through phases and I usually always come back to Quest Bars, you know, I, I can go without. Um, now Quest Bars are gluten-free, <laughs> so I don't, I will never not be having Quest Bars, but for the moment, uh, I'm not doing that. Then when Valerie Water, excuse me, when Valerie Waters was here, I think I mentioned this on my last video, you know, she had observed that I was having these Eco Bread, and we were talking about sushi or something. And she said, Kelly, you know, if you have insulin resistance, she said, I've had several clients that have it. She goes, you know, you really should cut out the wheat. And I'm like, but I'm pretty much going gluten-free already. She's like, hello, Ezekiel bread is wheat. And I'm like, no, it's, no, it's not. It's sprouted grain. She's like, it's sprouted wheat. And I just had this moment of like, oh, holy airhead, you know, like, I had been having that for breakfast every single day with my Eglin's Best eggs. Like, I had even gotten away from the protein pancakes that I love because I was really liking that. So here I was probably feeding myself every single day the past month or so something that is not ideal for insulin resistance. Then we started talking about rice and I said, you know, usually when I get sushi I get just salmon sashimi. Well then I thought about it, you guys, and the reality is is that I had been so, I think, over addicted to getting just salmon sashimi that the past month or so when I would order sushi I was so tired of salmon sashimi and I don't normally like to do like chef's choice sashimi so I go oh you know what it's okay I usually get salmon sashimi so this time I'll just do like an Alaskan roll that has tuna and avocado in it but it's the rice right so several times I mean, I'm not talking about like 20 times, but at least probably five or six times when I'd order sushi, I'd order sushi with the rice. And I specifically didn't get the brown rice because somebody else had told me that you don't order brown rice because it's more processed, so go with the white rice. Whatever. I had had sushi with rice more than I had in recent past. So all of a sudden when Val said that, I started like becoming even more of a research machine, specifically about the insulin resistance side of things. And the more I read about insulin resistance and what it is and what causes it and what can reverse it, so much of it is about diet. And I'm like, okay, there's no way I'm not gonna do everything. I, I mean, if this is reversible strictly with me alone and it can complement what I'm doing with the bioidentical stuff, why would I not give it my all? So I meet when Valerie was here, I meet, I texted Whitney and she's like, I didn't know you were having the Ezekiel bread. Um, so this is, you know, this is on me and, and we're just all so busy. You know, that's one of the things that's hard about working with a trainer um, when we're all virtual, you know, we're, we're crazy busy. Um, 
but thank God that Valerie was here and she saw that. So I cut the Ezekiel bread, obviously. Um, we had sushi that weekend and I just got my sashimi, but honestly, in just a week of making sure I haven't had any gluten or oatmeal or wheat, I certainly cut out, like I said, the Ezekiel, um, you know, making sure for, for example, for breakfast, I had scrambled eggs when I was in Denver for room service, I had scrambled eggs and fruit, and then I had my bulletproof coffee. I'm drinking a ton. I now have a gallon jug of water that I drink every day. Um, just these changes alone have made a difference. In fact, I'm kind of excited for the next time I weigh myself. Not quite sure though, because I know I'm still in that phase of building a lot of muscle. I can see a difference in my middle. And that's been the most frustrating thing is that even though I'm eight or nine weeks into my treatment, I could see that I was building muscle and I could see that I was losing fat, but it was in, it seemed to be in every area but my core, which is where most of the fat that I need to lose, it's, it's just hanging out there. <laughs> it's frustrating as heck. But these changes, you guys, in just a week, ju it, it's, well, it's been 10 days now because she left last Friday. Um, that's made such a huge difference. So I'm really, really excited about it. Um, and, and I guess I want to share with you guys, I feel like some people go, oh, I went gluten-free because it's so like trendy or, or whatever. For me, you know, going gluten-free and cutting out these things is because of all of the research I've done specifically to address insulin resistance. Uh, this is not necessarily to address the hypothyroid situation. I haven't even started reading about that. But insulin resistance is caused by years and years and years of bad eating and also chemicals and antibiotics, and it's a lot reversible from what I'm understanding. And let me just say, with what I've seen with progress in a week, I can only imagine what it's going to be going forward. Am I craving carbs, some bad carbs? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but is it easier to do every single day? It's just like when I cut the soda, it's just like anything. It gets easier every day. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will address them in my next Babylon-a-thon, okay?